Let's go ahead and do a quick whiteboard review of what we've talked about so far in the course and start bringing some of this together. Now, we know that from a cloud perspective, we need to connect basically to our cloud platform. And to do this, we need to, of course, for example, be able to connect, let's say this is GCP, AWS, it doesn't matter, to cloud services that are over in the back end. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of uh, take a second and talk about this. So this is our back end. And this over here, of course, would be the front end of the cloud. And what does this mean? Well, first, we need to realize that we need to connect to the front end. And to do this from on-prem, our developers that are sitting on-prem or at home could, re could be remote, it doesn't matter, will need to connect to the cloud platform. And to do that, they need to use what? An API, an application programming interface. So from a perspective of a connection, basically an integration from on-prem, we need to connect from on-prem to the front end with an API. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Now, when it comes to the cloud provider, we also can interface with backend services. For example, in Google Cloud, we would have Compute Engine, and as part of that, we would have service accounts, APIs that would be enabled to be able to communicate with other services. For example, and let me change my little diagram uh, figure here. We may have services over here. We may have services that act like middleware. But we may have services such as Compute Engine or Kubernetes Engine um, as well in the back end. And it could also be in different regions and zones. So for example, I may have another cloud region over here where this for example, may very well be, let's say, this is Iowa. And then over, uh, uh, over here, and let me just draw this out, over here might, uh, again, may be another service uh, in Google Cloud that's deployed, for example, in Charleston, South Carolina, in Finland, in Australia, wherever it is. But with that said, just be aware that uh, we need to connect to the right service in the right zone and region. For the purposes of this discussion, I just wanted to bring together that. Now, let's talk about, for example, orchestration briefly as well. What we could do is, if we're using a cloud service, we could um, use, for example, and I'll go ahead and bring this over here, what is called basically some kind of an infrastructure as code solution. And that would be a way we could orchestrate our services. And the way this works is I could go into, for example, cloud formation, and I'll just write that down. Again, you don't need to memorize this for the test. I'm just trying to bring together a few things. Cloud formation uh, in AWS, but in Google Cloud, we would call this Cloud Deployment Manager. and I'll just go short for that. But basically, in a nutshell, um, what we could do is I could spin up basically a template here, and it'll deploy this service, it'll deploy another service over here, and it could also deploy additional services in other regions and zones. Because some, uh, some cloud providers not only have regional provisioning capabilities, but also multi-regional, like Google Cloud, for example. So it really depends on the cloud provider, the capabilities. So let's do a quick summary. We know we need to have, for example, an API. The API connects basically our application, our client app, to the cloud service. There's front-end APIs. There's also back-end APIs as well. It varies by the cloud provider. Lastly, we know we could use some kind of an orchestration service 
such as cloud formation, cloud deployment manager, which is also known as infrastructure as code, which brings together, and I didn't mention this uh, in this diagram, but basically brings together a run book for us to bring everything together to follow a baseline that we set. And that's the beauty of the cloud, is it brings everything together in a nice, easy-to-use manner. Let's move on.